Uh, Senator O'Donnell. Thank you, Minister. Um, the decision as to whether the Senate should be abolished or retained is not ours to make within this House. We may argue within this chamber for the Senate's retention, and we may argue within this chamber against the Senate's abolition. But no matter how or which way we argue, the decision about the fate of the Senate is not ours to make. The Irish people will decide that fate in early October. It is only our duty, I feel, as Senators, to the, allow the Irish people to do just that without any impasse whatsoever. In my opinion, there is absolutely nobody in this Senate who has the right to vote against the validity of holding that referendum in October. None of us in this Senate have been elected by the general electorate. In fact, I have some cheek standing up here today since I was appointed by the Taoiseach and I will let the Irish people decide what they want to do about that. Are we not therefore to stand up for the Senate? You might ask. But in my opinion that is not the question. The question really is, is the Senate able to stand up for itself? Does the Senate warrant its own reward? Is the Senate an example of its own stance? Is the Senate an example of its own standard? Is the Senate of ex an example of its own reward? And is the Senate an example for its own retention? Are we good enough? If the answers to all those questions was resounding yes, maybe we would not be having this conversation. And if the answers to those questions was resounding yes, maybe we would not be having this referendum. What I'm arguing and what I'm grappling with is not personal and never could be or should be. What I'm trying to do through my thoughts is to separate the dancer from the dance within the context of the pending abolition bill. To argue an institution as an institution, not the individuals as individuals within it. Because I have profound respect for every senator here and in particular for my independent senators who I walked through the gate with two years ago. So my argument is not about any personal people in here. In the 35 years I worked in third level education, I knew nothing of what went on in the Senate. Nothing. I did not have a vote. I did not know how people got in. I did not know what they did when they got in here. And I had therefore very little interest in it on what went happen, happened on the inside. Would the Senate not have been better served, I ask, over the last two years, since we all knew the referendum was coming and it was in certain political parties' programme for government, had it not informed the Irish people about itself before making good and great speeches about reform? And what of reform? The government has given no commitment to reform of the Shannon. None. The Irish people are being asked to retain or abolish. They are not being asked about reform. And if they were, do I countenance that it would actually be brought about? We have heard and been introduced to new bills about reform of the Shannon. Reform, as I say again, is not what the Irish people are being asked to vote on. More arguments have arisen about retaining the Shannon and reform will follow. Who says so? The government certainly do not, and there has been no reform for 60 or 70 years. We have heard other, what I consider personally, fantasy arguments about the votes for the diaspora, votes for everybody in Northern Ireland who carry relevant passports. These arguments I feel are weak. It is though somebody off the island will make the Senate all right, open it up, make it relevant, connect it in, find its centrality, and bed down its relevance. This will not happen. And anyway, it's not the kernel of my point, which brings me right back to my initial question about whether the Senate warrants its own reward, is an example of its own stance, standard, centrality, function, connection and retention. Have we really been able to do any of that with any great local or regional or national conviction? We need to answer that question, Senators, very quickly. Power grab is the new up the ladder phrase. It's been used by many Senate reformists, and they have a right to use it. A lower house power grab if the Senate is to be abolished. But the question is, what exactly is the lower house power grabbing? The Senate doesn't have power grabbing power, except the power of a 90 day delay. Certainly the Senate has power of communication, new bills, intellect, alteration, addition or subtraction of existing bills. Certainly the Senate may look afresh at legislative procedures and unearth difficulties not noticed by the lower house. And a second opinion is always a good thing. Reconsideration is always a good thing. It is a good thing if and only if the second house is not controlled by a government majority.
The Senate in the past, and in my two years, has always been controlled by a government majority, strangled by the political parties. In my two years here, the Senate has brought about bill changes, but has it brought back ultimate ones? The new Senate of 42 non-elective before senators never sent back one bill. Some of the independents tried, some of the opposition tried, some Labour senator tried. Social welfare, lottery, banking, disability and housing. Not one bill went back and we all know why. After two, years, yeah. I, uh, Senator, after two years, I'm asking myself, do I have one example to show to the Irish people as to outside Senator Norris how we make a defined and defining difference and are capable of some real courage? We better, as new senators, answer that question very quickly. Where are the great checks and balances on the great lower house power-grabbing political executive? It is argued that if we all had a vote to come into the Senate, all would be well. Not so. We all have a vote in the lower house, and all is not well. It is argued you have cameralism, bicameralism. These are not evenly spread around the world. There's no clear trend. Some countries abolish, some countries retain. New Zealand, Denmark, Sweden and Iceland have abolished. Adopted Poland, Romania, Morocco, the Czech Republic. Some have switched. Norway, yeah, Norway, yes. Norway has one election and members split into Greece, two into two chambers for the duration of the legislature. Bills shuttle back and forward. Maybe we might try that. If the government cannot be brought down by a second chamber, are the outcomes of our votes as a second chamber really critical? It's a question. Are they not impotent? If the votes can be overridden by the lower house, is legislation in this house therefore reduced? It's a question. Most members of this house are driven and dictated by the party whip. And because of this, I ask the question, is there less tendency to scrutinise legislation? Is there less tendency to become more expert in specialised topics? What distinguishes this Senate in the eyes of the Irish people? I tell you, our composition, not our work, our composition. And I am part of that. Our composition is our most visible feature and it is always the first target. All of the arguments of the senators who want to retain the Senate have tended to concentrate on that, our composition, and not on what our functions, and to lay them down what they should be. And in our case, it is very difficult to separate our composition from our function. Do I think it is too late? That is for the Irish people to decide. Is there a general clamour for reform? If there is, where exactly is it? I only hear it from certain quarters. Where was the reform two years ago, five years ago, seven years ago, 10, 14, 17, 20, 22, will I go on years ago? Certainly they were reports, but reports have nothing to do with reform. Report, reform is about action and it never lives on shelves. Are we re beyond reform? We shall let the Irish people decide. The Senate is an ill-understood institution. Neither its best nor its worst features are understood by or communicated to the Irish public. The public are aware of vested interests of government parties. They understand the constitutional rigidity. They watch our low prestige. They know why the media does not concentrate on us. And when it does, it's with negative feelings. In other countries, there are desires for reform, but it rarely happens. We have a low profile. We're not understood. We demand less media attention. We get less attention. We are not directly elected. We have little power to challenge government. The party leaders live in the lower house. Our reports gather dust. There are continual calls for reform. It is full of vested interest, constitutional rigidity, low prestige, negative feelings and unnecessary duplication. Do the Irish people really engage with the Senate? I must let the Irish people decide whether they do or not. Where is our real urgency, Senators? Where is our real political cut and thrust? Where is our real legitimacy? Do we have one? If the senators do think it has legitimacy, tell me what it is. Lay it out for the Irish people. And I don't want answers about checks and balances because they're not true. The people will decide in October. Thank you, Senator O'Donnell. Uh, Senator Henry. Yeah, thank you, Lasker Herlek. Uh, um, thank you, Minister, for coming in. Um, I think most people in this house, um, when they ran for election to the Senate, knew about this referendum um, and that, it will, it, that the CETIC was committed to um, going ahead with it. 
Uh, I really don't see any point uh, debating and debating about reform because, in my opinion, that's uh, long over. We had 10 reports, nothing was done about it. And as I say, the Taoiseach is putting a question to the people, very straightforward, uh, do you want to abolish the Senate, yes or no? And it is very true that the people will decide. Um, I think we all would agree that this House cannot continue in its current form. Um, and I do, as others have said, I do believe uh, I support and welcome uh, local government reform. Uh, and certainly I would like to think that the uh, role of a councillor would be more enhanced. And uh, I would like to see also um, more Dáil reform. Um, I think when you uh, become a national politician, uh, I would like to see politicians, you know, uh, representing their country and acting as national politicians. And I think if we have a better local government, uh, we should leave the national politicians to run the country and the councillors to um, local government and uh, local issues, I suppose. Like you, Laska Hirdek, I too have a difficulty with the order of business. Um, and I think it is something that I do find very frustrating. I very rarely take part in it. It's just something that I, I um, get frustrated with. Uh, we do some very good work in this House, and certainly uh, a lot of good legislation and scrutiny of legislation has taken place. Uh, and we've had some very interesting people in here to address us. We had a farcical outburst by a senator here two weeks ago, which certainly did nothing to bolster argument for Shannon reform. In fact, our Senate retention. In fact, it did the opposite. And I have had a lot of people who have spoke to me in the last few weeks saying exactly that. Um, I, respect, um, I respect all my colleagues um, in whatever way they come into this house, whether it's through the university system, Taoiseach's nominees, whatever nominating body um, uh, that they ran for on their whatever panel. But there is one, I, w I would like to put on the record, if I could, that, but there is one uh, senator who does have a difficulty with me in the House. And I just want to say this, uh, that I got my nomination from the Vintners Federation of Ireland. Uh, my family have been involved in the pub business for almost 50 years, and I'm continuing in that business. Uh, we are not drug dealers, as was uh, said on national radio two weeks ago. Well, the legal drugs, alcohol is a misdemeanor. No, Corruption. and no, no. I am very proud to be in this house to represent the I Federation. But, but, but the excuse me. Dog. Sorry, Oscar Herlick. Um, but I just want to put that on the record because he has a difficulty with me being here. And I hope we get back to the day. I hope we get back to the day where people can drink. We'll go back to the pubs to drink in a controlled environment. And certainly, it's something that uh, I have worked closely with on the health committee in relation to the problem, as you know well in relation to the problem we have with uh, alcohol abuse in this country. And just before I, want to sit, before I sit down, I am delighted to be a member of Enda Kenny's parliamentary party. Uh, I have supported the Taoiseach since the day I came into his party, and I intend to continue to support him. Thank you, Senator. Senator Norris. Thank you very much, uh, Lask Hillock. Um, I have to say I shivered when I saw this lamentable bill uh, in print. Uh, there should have been two bills. It was dishonest for the not to be, in my opinion. This bill does one thing very specifically, very clearly. The holding of a referendum. No decent person could vote against a bill that merely facilitates the holding of a referendum. This bill purports to extinguish the Senate, and for that reason, no decent, self-respecting senator could ever vote for it. The bill, what the bill does, and I'm reading from the explanatory memorandum, Provides that Shannon Air and it's be abolished, and in consequence of its abolition, attend, amends provisions of the Constitution that confer functions on Shannon Air and uh, that are premised on the existence of that House. There isn't even a mention of the word referendum. This is the extinction of the Senate. This is force majeure. This is a power grab. And I'm honoured that I was the first person to show it. And I demonstrated through all the subterfuge of government in concealing the power grab to be able to impeach the President and impeach the Supreme Court as well. And they will get rid of this House at their peril, in my opinion. And no kind of emollient speech from the other side will convince me uh, otherwise. The bill is badly drafted. It's highly technical, it's confusing, it's deliberately confusing, because this is a bit of red meat held out by the Taoiseach to get the guard dogs off their prime, 
to get to distract their attention so that Irish people can be fooled. This is the Lisbon Treaty all over again. It's the same bloody tactic. And they didn't even read that. It was confusing. It was deliberately, we were told from Europe, deliberately to confuse the people. I've read legislation in the last 26 years. When I read this first, I thought it was inaccurate because of the way in which the Irish provisions and the English provisions were drafted. I got an expert to look at it. No, but it's done so technically that God Almighty couldn't make head or tail of it. And that is completely and utterly uh, deliberate. Now, I said no self-respecting senator could vote for it. How could they? I've clearly said it's not about a referendum, it's about extinguishing the Senate. This is not Turkey's voting for Christmas. This is Turkey's being invited to slit their own throats, eviscerate themselves and stuff themselves at the instigation of the Taoiseach. And let me tell you who pros as Democrats and orators over there, there's not even the suggestion of a vegetarian alternative because Mr. Kenny from the West of Ireland has blood on his fangs, or he thinks so, and he thinks the Irish people are as stupid as the people who elected his government on false promises. And I'd like to say this, there's all this blather about reform of the stall. I want to say to Mr. Enda Kenny, I don't believe a word of it. Show us the colour of your money! Show us the colour of your money. Out with it. Let's see a bit of door reform. There isn't a damn bit of door reform, and the Irish people will be bloody stupid. I mean, let him abolish the Senate because he's pretending that he's going to, down the road somewhere, make a serious uh, uh, attempt. Why would he? When he has mutilated the Oroctus, when he has carved the Oroctus up by one third, when he has halved parliamentary representation, when he's grabbed all these powers of committees. Why would he? That's not the direction in which he's going at all. And he quotes various countries. He quotes little Denmark and little Finland. Great! They abolished the second chamber and they did it in tandem with strengthening massively local, local democracy and changing the regulations within the main parliament so that there were free votes, votes of conscience. So I believe in the bloody Kenny when he gives a free vote on the abortion bill. Let's see that. Let's see a bit of consistency and honesty. I don't know what Enda Kenny's reading is, but it looks to me as if he's been reading the great essay on simulation and dissimulation by Sir Francis Bacon, because there isn't one tissue of truth in his rotten little speech. This is an appalling situation. If we go down the corridor here, we'll see on the wall a portrait of a smug-looking little man, a little politician who get lost among the crowding in here of core bones that are trying to abolish us. And his name is Mr. Foster. And when in 1800, he in no doubt tones of lovely silver Augustan Latin pronounced the death of the Irish Parliament, he then shoved the silver mace up under his gown and legged it down the street. He was a liar and a thief. And whoever proposes this and whoever votes for it is a liar and a thief and a traitor to the Irish people, as far as I'm concerned. And they should push the portrait of Forster up in that chair if they abolish the Senate as a reminder of the shame brought on Sharon. Now, we've heard how useless this house is. How useless was Mary Robinson, who's a friend of mine? How useless was Owen Sheehy Skeffington? And they had the unmitigated cheek to enroll Mary Robinson, who would be furious at the denigration of the Senate. And I know her because I've known her better than any other person in this house knows her. I was a friend of Noel Brown for 30 years. He signed my nomination papers, every nomination until he died. And Noel would be livid at the idea that some grimy little squirt from the other side has been sent out to abuse his name. Noel Brown can't speak for himself, but I sure as ha 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 hell can 
And I would say to those little bamboozers, you're not Noel Brown. You never knew Noel Brown, but I knew him intimately. Without Shannon Aaron, we wouldn't have had the first debate on AIDS. We wouldn't have had a foreign affairs committee. We wouldn't have any debate on rendition. And I handed the papers I got and the work I did down to Michael D. Higgins and the elders in the door, and they took it up. But it was taken up from this house. We wouldn't have had, I don't think, certainly for some years, the Civil Partnership Bill. And my colleagues here, David Fergal Quinn, how many bills has he produced even in this session? The, the building bill. Uh, this bill is still stuck. These idiots in the lower house and they complain about us. And Mr. Ender Kenny had the gall to come into this house and say, or set out on the plinth over there, what did the Senate do to stop the disaster of the Celtic Tiger? Well, I say what I did, as it was. I stood in his chamber and I argued against it and I made a case that was clear, logical and confirmed to be right. And thanks to Peter Matthews, I actually put the identical accurate figures and showed they were wrong. And I voted against it. I voted against uh, the um, uh, benchmarking. And I put the names of the, uh, the, 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 the bondholders and said they should be burnt. And the Cahillac there nearly broke his gavel on. None of them in the balls in, in, in the Senate, had the, in the door had the balls, including Ender Kenny. And where was Mr. Ender Kenny at that stage? Where was Mr. Ender Kenny, who sounds so puffed up and brave and challenged in the Senate? He was down there in the lower house, neatly supporting fuel being poured on the Celtic Tiger and its flames, getting involved in his usual corrupt auction politics, and then leading his meek little supporters in to vote in favour of the bank guarantee. And that man has the impertinence to attack the Senate. And they say it wasn't reformed. No, it wasn't reformed. Yeah, and Senator Donald's right. The establishment did nothing about it. Nothing, nothing, nothing for 10 years, 10 reports, 70 years, and they even got a previous referendum too, and did sweet bugger all about it. Which we were all in the university seats demanding reform. What can we do? We can't take over government and force them to do it. They wouldn't do it. Every single government, every single party corrupted this house, but still this brave little ship with its tattered sails and hold and not properly caught and deliberately leaked by those blackguards in their own corrupt interests. It sails through the storms and it's held firm in its own way for the Irish people. And I honour it. Uh, I honour it for that. We had other countries from all over the globe brought in that had abolished their sails. I wonder if he didn't mention uh, Mr Mugabe. The first thing Mr. Mugabe did was to abolish the Senate. So maybe Mr. Kenny sees himself in the mould, not just of a little Napoleon, One minute, sir. but also uh, in the uh, uh, guys. I just looked today, this very day, a bill by Senator Zappone uh, and others was accepted here. Another bill accepted here. Now, the leader talks, he starts off with Mr. Kenny about uh, his... Um, Doll reform, rubbish, don't believe a word of it. 14 doll committees will be established, of course they will. Of course, lots of jobs for the boys, jobs for the boys, jobs for the boys, jobs for the boys. And this is what the Irish people will vote for, jobs for the bloody boys, the ones who dragged us into the ruins of this economy. That's right. Um, uh, and, uh, oh, they wouldn't bring a bill on such flimsy grounds or off the top. He said, that's exactly what he did. I was here. I saw it. Nobody knew it. The face on Francis Fitzgerald. Ask Francis Fitzgerald, did this wonderful open heart teacher, uh, teacher ever let her know what, 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 what was, uh, what was going on? The chair is low to intervene, Senator. Beg pardon? The chair is low to intervene, but I must oh, remind you that your time is up. Uh, and um, uh, then... The, 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 it's just the unspeakable dishonesty of, of this speech. He's going to look at the presidency and he's going to reduce the number of 
of members to uh, to 14 in that house. Impossible for an independent to get, but will you listen to the voice of the people? This wonderful Democrat, this absolute Democrat, who wouldn't recognise democracy if it came up and puked in his face. He's saying, oh, the presidency, well, now let me tell you, despite all the manoeuvrings, I got a thing through the convention, which he wouldn't even let Shannon Aaron be discussed in. I got a thing through about the presidency to allow the people of Ireland a greater say. That's a bit of democracy. 97% of the people at the convention voted for it. Let's hear a titter out of Enda Kenny about that. I understand I'm nearly at my limit, so I will just end by saying I reiterate my challenge to Enda Kenny to come into this house or to better, I think what our challenge was for television or radio, I'll debate with him and I will peel the layers of dishonesty and populism away from them and show the Irish people what's really being done to them so they won't be fooled another time until they know what way to vote. They'll vote against this bill, which is a fraud perpetrated on the Irish people as gross as a fraud that was perpetrated by Woods Hapens in the 18th century and was defeated by the oratory and writing of the great Jonathan Swift. And that's where power relies sometimes, in the hands of the weak, in the hands of the people who are being battered, who are having democracy torn from them. And we can, if we let the people know what's happening, Thank you, we Senator. can stymie this miserable little act of political vandalism. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Senator Landy, you have 10 minutes. Thank you, uh, Cahirlock. And uh, I'd like to welcome the Minister into the House. And, um, First of all, I'd like to say that uh, I'm pleased that uh, 